Um, and actually I was going, I was in school for a degree in entrepreneurship, but I had been pursuing a minor in pre-law. So my plan was to go to law school, if I'm being completely honest with you. And so I got to the point of graduating and I was making pretty good money on the side, like $30,000 a year while I was in school full time. And I had no expenses, remember, because my dad was kicking me money to pay for college. Like he was taking out extra loan money to pay for rent, food, uh, and gas. So all I really, and, and books. And so all I really had to pay for was fun. So even before the business was my own, the way we initially started getting clients was door hanger flyers. Uh, we printed off a bunch of flyers. We stuck them in people's doors. You know, back then, 18 years ago, the, the nice door hanger flyer, you can just go online and find templates and that wasn't available. So I had a printer though, and I had some ink. So I started printing them off my printer. Literally, I printed like two, 300 flyers off my printer and I went out and put them on doors. But we weren't getting any work from that. Like we weren't even getting phone calls. Um, not the first time. It, it just, it, there, it just didn't work. I don't know. Truth is, a couple, three, two, three hundred flyers ain't enough to get business. Um, so after I bought the business from my brother and owned the whole thing, um, we did the door hanger flyer thing again. But this time, I did it a little bit differently. This time, I bought some nice plastic door hanger bags from Uline and i made some magnetic business cards okay so business card magnets and i put them in that little bag with a nice flyer that you know what i do you know spring cleanups fall cleanups um lawn mowing service tree trimming gutter cleaning you know all this anything that a, a young guy who works hard can do basically i tried to put it on there um and man i still didn't get a whole lot of business but Every time I tried and put out another 2,000, 3,000 flyers, I'd get five, six, maybe 10 phone calls. You know what I mean? And that would turn into a couple Daddy. jobs. But I was in college, Daddy. so I didn't need a bunch of money. But for college, I was making way more money than most of my friends were making. So <laughs> it was great. So I continued doing that. That formula seemed to work. Um, and I'd put out a bunch of flyers in the spring. I'd get a bunch of work. Summer would come around. We'd put out more flyers. I'd get a bunch of work. Fall would come around, I'd put some more flyers out, we'd get more work. I was slowly building lawn care clients. Unfortunately, I started right in 2007. So when the first recession hit, it was not until about the end of 2008, all my clients just dropped, dude. I had built up to like 25, 30 clients and I dropped down to like 12, literally like in one season, like all my clients for 2009 were just like, yeah, we're gonna do it ourselves. Oh, we can't afford to do it anymore. And what it was, was they were low income clients. They weren't, they weren't clients who could normally afford that service, but because I was doing it for maybe a little bit less than the next guy, they could afford it when I did it until they lost their jobs or their pay got cut with the recession. So that's how I kind of got going. And then of course it grew from there, right? So how did it grow? Well, one of the biggest benefits I had in my favor was that I did not have kids. These things, it's really hard to grow a business with these things because this is my priority in life today, okay? So back then, the only thing I had was that business. That was everything. That was that was my baby. I grew it for, how old are you now, boy? Almost three. I grew it for 15 years before I had kids. That's definitely one of the secrets is not having anything else that needs you to be responsible for it. I did have dogs, but kids will kill your business. So anyways, man, I, I just kept reusing that formula for years. Um... Uh, I would make flyers. I'd put 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 out. And after like three or four years, I had literally flyered every single house in the city that was over $100,000 in value. Like there was nobody who could afford lawn care services who didn't have my flyer and my magnet on their door, hopefully on their fridge at this point. But still, I mean, I was a struggling business owner. Like that was enough that I could make forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 doing it myself. Uh, so by the time I graduate, I'm bringing in like 40 grand a year. Uh, and I also have an opportunity to stick around for an extra year and I can get an accelerated master's. So basically I can do one more semester and I can take some dual credits my senior year. So I'm taking some a little bit tougher classes senior year. Uh, but when it's all said and done, I got a master's degree. And in the meantime, I can buy myself one more year to figure out if this is actually what I want to do with my life. And... That's what I did. I, I bought myself a year and then 
the business doubled in size and I stepped back a little bit. I actually ended up making, I made less profit, but my sales doubled. So numbers wise, dude, that first year I probably did like $22,000 in sales. My next year, I think I did like 30,000. The, the year after that, I think I ended up doing like 34,000. Um, and then it doubled to 70,000. And then it doubled again to 140,000. And then it doubled again to 300,000. And then it went up to like, it didn't double. It stopped doubling after that. From 300,000, it went up to like 500. And then from 500 to like 615. From 615 to like 780. And then basically from 780, we hit a mil. Um, and then last year, we finally hit uh, 1.065 mil. This year, I'm shooting for 1.2 mil. But again, how did I get there? Well, man... It's like I solved one problem at a time and I just kind of kept growing and adding like, what's the next thing I got to do to grow this business? So, right, I started mowing grass and then eventually people would ask me, they take me around and they'd want me to trim their bushes and you get with these old ladies and they know all the names of the bushes, right? And so they're like, I need to trim my you, I need to cut back my daylilies and I need you to trim my burning bush and like, here's my Japanese maple. And I started by remembering the bushes that I really liked, right? Um... And so as I'm going, I'm like learning stuff and I'm learning from these ladies. Like I'm just learning on the job. I'm learning all kinds of crap. People know all kinds of stuff, but people also will tell you wrong. Like people, people learn these folk tales or these folk cures and like that stuff, that stuff will throw you for a loop. And so I got to a point where the information wasn't always adding up. I needed to seek out a more professional or more, a more trusted source. Daddy. And so anyways, man, after I finished my master's degree, I went back to the local technical college and I took like four or five classes at the tech school so that I could hone in my technical skills directly related to this business. So I took classes in like small engine repair and some of the most beneficial classes for me was probably like um, Woody ID. So actually like how to identify plants and then learning a bunch of different plants and trees. Um, an urban forestry class. That's how they literally taught me the ISA arborist material in the urban forestry class. That was a great resource for me. Uh, I took an irrigation design class. That was an awesome resource. Um, and then eventually I got my backflow certification through that same tech school. And all of those classes I took really set me apart from everybody else because I had a master's level education when I was learning this stuff. So I wasn't just going in there not focused. I picked up every single thing that they laid down. Like I was not only picking it up, I was using it out in the field, taking notes, making sure that I was learning the material as well as I could learn the material. And the customers picked up on that. And so once the customers picked up on that, dude, that's when the business doubled. That, you know those doubled numbers I just went up? That's when that happens.